you for attending the scaling and safeguarding the heart of Kubernetes. A quick question for the audience. What's the heart of Kubernetes? STD, thank you. That's the only answer I heard. Thank you very much. I just to make sure you're still awake and then at the right session. Um, so yes, this is a SIG SCD um, meeting or track talk. Uh, my name is Wenjia. I am one of the um, chair of SIG SCD. I, I am also the uh, engineering manager of Google. We work on GKE and open source Kubernetes and SCD. Hey team, uh, my name is James Blair. I'm a specialist architect at Red Hat and uh, co-chair for SIG CD alongside Wenjia. Hello guys, uh, I'm Ivan Valdez or Ivan. Um, I'm contribute on my free time, and basically what I do in NetCD is I specialize in CI/CD automation uh, releases and um, tooling. Hello, I'm Mark Sharkovich. Uh, I'm tech lead for SIG etcd. Uh, I work at Google, leading the uh, GKE etcd team. All right. So here is a quick agenda of today's uh, topics. We'll start with a quick introduction of the SIG, and then we'll go um, into some of the highlight of the project. All right. Uh, so um, this is the team of SCD, and then you have seen three of us. And we also have another tech lead uh, from VMWorld called uh, Benjamin Wang. Some of you uh, have seen him in um, Paris. All right, um, the, the SIG SD owns the SD project and how it, how it is used by Kubernetes. And as the storage of uh, Kubernetes, our goal is very simple. We want to provide the best production level data store for cloud native distributed system. And it should be reliable, simple to maintain and scale. All right, next is the exciting uh, moment. Um, I don't know if you have been to the Contributor Summit. So if you haven't, you, have, you probably missed this. This year, uh, when, we, when SD become the SIG of Kubernetes, the first KubeCon, we didn't have any award winners. And this year, we actually have three of them, which is very exciting for us and very proud. Um, first award winner is Ivan or Ivan by this. <laughs> um, so, um, this was not read out at the tr Contributor Summit because there are too many award winners, so I want to read this out here. Uh, uh, thank you, Ivan. You have been extremely active across a number of SD sub-projects and helped take the SIG SD tooling to another level. And we deeply appreciate your contribution and, and thank you for your hard work. All right. Next winner is Si Yuan from Google. Si Yuan made crucial contribution to some of our most important roadmaps for SCD, and uh, both within the SCD and Kubernetes sub project related to SCD. Uh, thank you, Si Yuan, for your help towards making um, SCD 3.6 a reality. And then last but not least, we have Wei Fu from Microsoft. Uh, who has demonstrated extraordinary knowledge in crucial areas in SED and BBOAT. They were instrumental in lending SED's extremely complex upgrade of gRPC gateway from V1 to V2 and creating our new BBOAT robustness test suite. Yeah, well, Wei uh, is supposed to be one of the speakers, but uh, he couldn't make to the trip. Um, we'll see him next time. All right, and then um, it's start to become a tradition. We always have releases during KubeCon. I think it was yesterday that we released 3.4.35 and 3.5.17. So you can start to use it. Um, and I, I just want to mention, and thanks to actually uh, Ivan and James, uh, hard work, uh, our release time, ha uh, well, our release process have been improved so much that our release time uh, decreased from one day to 20 minutes nowadays. So um, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, with that actually give me a, a, a good bridge to my next thing that I want to talk about. Um, all three award winners, Si Yuan, Fu Wei, and Ivan, they are actually from our 
uh, first cohort of SAD mentorship program, uh, which was um, which happened in, in to KubeCon before KubeCon Chicago. And uh, we had um, five pair of, pairs of mentor mentee, and um, three of them become uh, award winner, and they all become sub-project leaders. And one of the uh, mentorship program uh, mentee is actually James. He, he was mentor and the mentee at the same time. Uh, he just like feel that he hasn't contributed enough and always want to extend to the new area. So James also, uh, from this mentorship program, extended his expertise area. Um, so now, we, with that, we actually double the core team of SCD, which is like a, a, a gr I'm super proud of our um, mentorship program. And so we have more people who can be the mentors. Um, now we are opening up our second cohort of mentorship program. Yeah, take a picture and um, remember this link and submit your application. I'll stay here for a little longer. And there are a lot of other ways that you, make, you can make contributions to, um, you can attend CDSD meetings, um, robustness test meetings, and there are a couple of projects that we need help with. Um, so yeah, we have a release team, we have different work groups, we have feature gate that need help. Um, so please contact the lead of each working group and start contribute. All right. Thanks, Wenjia. All right, team, I would uh, like to introduce um, our new uh, operator working group. So as a uh, Kubernetes special interest group, we can uh, use the Kubernetes project um, mechanisms for getting work done. Uh, one of those is the working group construct. Um, so we've started off this new working group to put together uh, finally, an officially uh, project-supported operator for etcd. It's something that's been a long time uh, coming, long time missing. So, uh, the, if you think back uh, to around 2018, um, core OS days, um, at that point, some of you may be familiar with the old uh, core OS etcd operator. Um, since that was unmaintained um, and left unmaintained, the community has sort of um, fragmented into a variety of um, projects, some some open source, some internal around uh, open source, like you know, etcd operators, uh, and we need to unify that effort now. Um, so we've got an opportunity to do that through this new working group, and um, reduce that fragmentation in our ecosystem. Um, so, a bit of context on what we want to tackle with the working group: um, we're trying to put together an efficient automated, um, you know, well put together operator for running etcd clusters in Kubernetes. Um, we'll work through the requirements, use cases, and the, you know, put together the roadmap for that operator. Um, I do have to put a note and, and sort of call this out. What we're focused on initially is using etcd at a workload application level um, on top of Kubernetes, rather than being the operator for the etcd instances running inside your uh, Kubernetes clusters for the cluster itself. Um, so that will come with time, but that's just letting you know what our initial focus is. So we've got a variety of leads. I'm, I've got the pleasure of being joined by Benjamin, uh, Cyprian, um, Josh, and Justin um, as co-leads for the working group. Uh, and we've gone through and put together a survey um, on how folks are using etcd currently to help shape the roadmap that we've got initially. Um, so no surprises if we look at how folks are running etcd, it's pretty much either regular pods or static pods. Um, there's a little bit of weird and wonderful stuff out there around bare metal and VMs, but it's mostly just pods. When it comes to how many clusters, you've either got a whole heap or not that many um, based on the survey so far. Not that much in between. And when it comes to management, uh, it's fairly well dominated by that fragmented ecosystem of existing community operators or, or uh, closed source operators, as well as the Helm charts. Probably the Bitnami chart is the most popular um, at this point. There's a bunch of other tools out there, um, but that's just a bit of insight on what we got back from the survey. 
And then we ask the all-important question of what is the hardest part? You know, what, what sucks about running clusters at the moment? And no surprises, team, you know, member management, scaling in and out in those clusters, um, doing upgrades and uh, backup and recovery. So it's, it's all the usual suspects, um, but this really helped us prioritize and put together that roadmap. So um, we've got a link there. I'll leave this up for a moment around where that roadmap's at at the moment. Um, you can see for 0.1.0, it is pretty basic. You know, we're just talking about creating clusters, setting a size, uh, doing some TLS and maybe some cert renewal. And talking about API, I'd really like to invite anyone that's sort of passionate in this area to uh, join the discussion about the API um, for the operator. I've got a trivial example on the screen there of just talking about, you know, if we're talking about 0.1.0, maybe we're just talking about the, uh, the cluster uh, spec there with a size, perhaps your image, um, and the version. But obviously, as we progress through the roadmap, that gets fairly interesting. And uh, I've just got a link on screen there for um, the link through the discussion doc. So if you have input into that, we would, we would love to uh, collaborate on that. All right, so where are we at with the working group? Very quickly, um, the survey's done, evaluation of the existing projects is done. Um, we've got the roadmap in place um, for the first four releases, and we've got the new repository in place and underway um, with a basic uh, Kube Builder scaffold um, to get us underway. So uh, really a call to action team. If you're uh, working on your own fork of an operator or your own project for an operator and you want to sort of bring those, um, uh, unify that effort into uh, a shared operator, we'd love to work with you and uh, see you in the, in the GitHub repository. Thanks, team. Over to Ivan to discuss feature gates. All right, uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about feature gates. So it's, who's excited about feature gates? <laughs> just, I, just a joke. I know that everybody's excited about feature gates. Uh, can, you, can you guys hear me? I just realized. Okay, um, so basically the main issue and the main motivation why we wanna bring feature gates is that our current state is that uh, we have experimental features. So we have the, how we define the, the features in at CD. It's either it's experimental or it's graduated. We don't have like this, uh, like we don't have stages uh, that in, in which we can promote the, the different features. So it's kind of difficult to work with for first the developer because they need to specify the, the flag all the way from reading it from CLI uh, all the way to the, where they're doing the functionality. So it's, it, we don't have a proper framework to, to manage this. Uh, it's also very difficult later to remove uh, these experimental flags because it creates a breaking change. And then also sometimes uh, removing the experimental one falls through the cracks if the developer is not available anymore. And so we end up with these experimental flags living forever. Um, so basically, Ben uh, raised this issue, but I think it was pretty much uh, a lot of people wanted to to do uh, to to enable feature the feature gates. Uh, so how we split the work was first uh, create a cap. Uh, this is my best attempt at creating and making caps nice. Um, so basically, uh, the first step is to enable several level feature gates. Um, so this is basically creating the whole framework based on the idea and uh, the pattern that Kubernetes, Kubernetes uses for feature gates. So we can define uh, the, the different stages in which the, these features are. For example, uh, so we can define them as alpha, beta, uh, GA, or deprecated. And then we also want to implement a, a client-side way of querying uh, these feature gates and which one are enabled. And the, the, also the idea is that we migrate all of the ex existing feature gates that, uh, or like experimental features that we have into this model. Uh, the cap has already been merged, uh, which is great. And the implementation in the etcd repository is already in progress. So we're working on that in the main branch. So that basically means that the availability is, is going to be in 3.6. Um, then we have the second one 
is cluster level feature gates. Uh, so this will be for feature gates that are a little bit more complex, uh, that basically touch more underlying the, the for example, the data store in, in etcd. And so basically, you can just enable it in a single uh, server. You actually need to enable it in the whole cluster so you have consistency. Uh, so the idea is that we're going to power it by, with Raft, and then we will have also an in interface to query which uh, feature gates are uh, enabled in the, in the, in the cluster. Uh, we want to bring also client APIs, and then also be able to implement removals of feature gates when they are no longer relevant, um, or that basically they're just a part of the, of, of, uh, the, the, the code base. Um, the cap is still in progress, uh, and it has not been merged. Um, so this is still uh, something that it's in, in a design phase, and we're hopefully gonna uh, merge the cap soon. Um, and then, so I just wanna also to recognize the team behind feature gates. Uh, Sijuan is leading the team. Uh, she's been doing amazing. And then we also have Henry, that he's also a great contributor, and Bake, uh, that those two guys uh, have been doing an amazing job at working with feature gates. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> hey, today I wanted to talk to you about compaction revision issue. So around half a year ago, we have discovered a new issue and wanted to I want today to maybe look at how community does the, the, the discovery, how do we analyze it, and how do we plan, or what was the cause of the issue, and how do we, we make sure that in future those things will be less and less, or in the best case, never happen. So this is all because etcd is pretty important. Uh, reliability still remains our top priority, and we are the building block that stands at the, the, the backbone of the cloud native world. So like, we should be both pr uh, proud of it, but also take the responsibility and make sure that all those great <coughs> solutions that you can see on the conference can be built and can develop uh, for the future of cloud native. Um, so how we do that? We do it by taking our uh, etcd and putting a huge pressure and stress to uh, validate how it behaves in different scenarios and see how it can crack. So when we, <coughs> when we do that, we try to send different types of traffic, different ty uh, watch different ki types of keys, inject a couple of uh, fail points, like for example, trashing it at specific important places in Raft implementation, or we simulate the network disruption, so we c uh, or even disk failure. So that way we know when, when etcd breaks, we can look at it and debug it. <coughs> so this is done as a uh, automa fully automated process that runs every day uh, uh, multiple, like hundreds of different scenarios that <laughs> analyzes so-called robustness of etcd. It has uh, both etcd generic traffic, but also Kubernetes specific because Kubernetes only uses sub, sub part of the API. So we want to make sure that Kubernetes is, is specifically treated to, to, to make sure that it works for it. We test different cluster sizes and also inject different fail points. So we can uh, test defrag, test ra uh, raft sa saving on snapshots uh, exchange. So this is done um, uh, automatically and then published uh, as reports that anyone can read on community. And we, every two weeks we gather to analyze how, uh, uh, what are the, the results of those uh, tests, do we triage, we try to identify the top issues. And when someone finds an issue, we, then they can post it as with the report, giving them a full history what happened. So <coughs> this leads me to how we discovered the issue. And you can see the example of the report of how, uh, how you could debug the, the test. So um, the important part is uh, to, to validate the correctness at CD. We do a couple of steps. First step is validating linearization. So linearization is one of the important guarantees in distributed system. 
basically makes the distributed system, uh, uh, give the guarantee that distributed system behaves like a single instance, even though it's distributed and each member thinks independently. So here we got a linearization success, we, uh, that worked, but during the watch validation, we broke one of the guarantees. So here you can see the diff uh, from like around 300 of entries from the, from the watch, we are missing one, the one that, that starts with the minus line from the diff. So we failed the watch history so-called uh, reliability guarantee. Uh, so if you think as, uh, about a watch, uh, watch compared to traditional request response, that usually just if it works, it works, uh, uh, <coughs> watch is a strong, uh, event strongly eventually consistent uh, system of fetching data, which makes this kind of guarantees much harder to validate. Um, so when you think about a watch, like on in, both in Kubernetes and uh, in etcd, you expect to get an ordered history of everything that happened in the, the cluster, all the writes, re, uh, all the writes, delete, uh, uh, deletes, and updates. You expect to not see any duplicates, so the API should be uh, unique. You expect it to be reliable, so everything that happened, you should be able to see it. Um, if connection breaks, you should be able to resume it at any point uh, so that you can continue uh, seeing it. Um, and uh, you get something, uh, bookmarks. So if you request for bookmarks, you will get an update. So if nothing happens on the stream for some time, you still know that you're not like an hour back because nothing happened for, for an hour. You will get an update every couple of seconds that you're Clo much closer and you just like nothing interesting for you has happened. Uh, and the last guarantee is atomic. It just uh, guarantees that when you see a specific revision, you see all the transactions that happened in this revision. So in the case I described we draw, uh, uh, before, we broke the reliable guarantee. It means that one of the, or uh, one or more events that were supposed to uh, <coughs> We, we were supposed to see didn't happen. So there was a write uh, and, or in this specific case, there was a delete that was supposed to happen and be on watch and we didn't see it. And we know because you can, uh, in the report, you can go and validate that the, the files uh, system, you can get, read the um, database file, you can read the, uh, the entry of the, uh, the wall file. So write a head log uh, that gives you history of all the writes and you can validate that there uh, specifically was a write that was just not observed on the watch. So uh, to give you some background um, about what exactly happened in the issue, let's talk about compaction. Compaction, you can think about compaction as your, uh, you can compare it to your like uh, memory. Every day you go through, you, you, through your whole day, if events hap things happen, you collect all this uh, information, you remember what, like maybe more or less exactly what, uh, um, what your day, what did you day on that, what did you do on that day, what you ate, uh, what friends you met, but when you go to, 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 to sleep, your, your, your brain uh, cannot handle like, growing and growing information. So from time, to, or on every time you go to s uh, sleep, your brain needs to reorganize the information, make sure that the important information that impacts like you, what, uh, uh, what is, it will be important for the future is preserved, while, while the information that maybe it will be not imp important for the future uh, is, uh, can be removed. So this is exactly what happens in, uh, at CD. It just, uh, within a window of, for example, five minutes in Kubernetes, it takes, still maintains all the changes that happened in the last five minutes, but all the previous keys, the history is cleaned up as long as the key didn't persist. Uh, so was, for example, the key was deleted, so we don't, we don't ca care about the keys that are no longer re relevant and impact uh, the, the newest state, they can be removed. So <coughs> the missing uh, delete, uh, delete event was a combination of a couple of factors. 
where the watch is expected to be inclusive, so we can open and watch on some uh, point of history, and you should still expect to see the event that happened on this, at this point. While compaction is exclusive, it means that when you compact on some revision, all the, uh, all the things that happened before can be uh, cleaned up, by the, but the exact point should still be there. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so compaction assumes that the, uh, it can always uh, clean up deletes, so this creates a conflict be be between two sides. One from uh, the left side or the old history compaction clean up, cleans up all the events up to the point in c uh, while the watch try to, uh, tries to read the information. So you can feel, uh, think about this as a like, watch being the detective that tries to find the clues and r uh, f find out what was happening in the cluster while someone already has started cleaning up what every, like, all the evidence. Uh, <coughs> so this, results in the, this res has resulted in this specific uh, case to, uh, in the uh, element uh, or the e delete event to, to be missed. So what, what, how this impacts you, how, what this issue can mean for you. So as, uh, fortunately, for, if you are a Kubernetes user and you are still uh, using the default compaction, you're not affected because Kubernetes guarantees, fortunately, that all compactions can ha will happen on a put request. Uh, uh, it does it because of optimistic concurrency and making sure that uh, there is only one writer that does the compaction. So this guarantees that Kubernetes but its own is fully not affected, while the, uh, the all other mechanisms of compactions don't have this guarantee. So if you use uh, automatic HD compaction by the flag uh, or run a manual uh, compaction yourself, you should be upgraded to the newest versions that uh, I think we released uh, already sometime. So if you're interested more into learning how we find these issues and want to do the um, investigations yourself, on, um, please, you can attend and join us to find all of those bugs. Uh, you can, <coughs> so we, we are, uh, the bug that I presented today didn't affect explicitly Kubernetes, which is both great, uh, showing us that we are now getting into more and more obscure issues that are less and less impactful for the users, showing us that the, the, the process is working. And that's all we have today. If there are any questions, please use the microphones. Any questions? Let me put this back to the Yeah, I have a question. Um, so you guys are working on feature gates. Um, in Kubernetes, feature gates make more sense because there's a regular cadence of releases. Is there a plan to have a regular cadence of etcd releases? Short answer, yes. Uh, we have some uh, challenging roadmap items for 3.6.0. Um, we and, and feature gates is one of those. Um, we're making progress on those, and beyond 3.6, uh, life looks a whole lot easier. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Thanks.